Hello and welcome back to I Like Motorbikes. I'd like you to sit back and relax as you follow my European trip from the summer of 2017 where I covered more than 2,100 miles on my 2005 Honda CG125. I had no real plans for this trip, but I knew I wanted to at least visit the B500 in southwest Germany. I set off from my home in Somerset on Thursday 24th of August, being waved away by my parents and heading to Kent for my first overnight stop. That way I'll be able to get on the Channel Tunnel train early and maximise my time away as I planned. I'd only chosen to book the Channel Tunnel as my crossing five days earlier, such was my lack of planning. Prior to this trip, my only experience of going abroad was a youth exchange programme to Belarus. So the first few miles were just completely surreal. It was so easy to get to a land that felt familiar, yet so different all at the same time. After a minor mix up of roads at the beginning, and head through some villages close to Calais, I made a beeline for Belgium to get into Germany as fast as possible. The flatlands of northern France and Belgium held little excitement for me and the major routes I happened to be on were mostly boring and straight with the odd twist and turn through a village here and there. After entering Germany via Aachen and going back through France and back into Germany at Baden-Baden, it was time to tackle the B500, a road I'd heard so much about. It runs for about 145 miles from Baden-Baden through the Black Forest, which is famed for its ghetto, towards the Switzerland border with a little break in the middle. The road was being built in the 1930s and the outbreak of World War II stopped progress and it was never resumed post-war. I expect it was for this reason that I lost the B500 at one stage, so ended up making lots of little stops to keep double checking Google Maps. The riding was lots of broad sweeping curves, elevation change allowing your vantage points over fantastic scenery. Really the humble 11 horsepower of the CG single cylinder motor was working hard up and down all day long and I felt like I may be holding up traffic on some of the inclines. Through the Black Forest there seems to be an abundance of timber yards which I just hadn't expected, and the roads winding along valleys seem comparatively empty of human settlements when compared to the UK. That's because Germany has a population 23% larger than the UK, but an area nearly 50% larger to fit them in. It was this day that I chose to stop in a roadside hotel as all of the sunny weather had made me begin to smell a little. Whilst I was in the hotel, I made the decision to head into Switzerland the next morning. Entering Switzerland in the early part of the morning, I chose to stay in the northern part of the country and visit Lake Constance, as I'd heard my dad talk of it fondly a number of times, and I wanted to see it for myself. It 
happens to be the third largest freshwater lake in Central and Western Europe, and it certainly is a sight to behold. The ride in Switzerland was mostly dull, full of built up towns and crawling along at a pace that just didn't help keep me cool. At one point during the day, it was 32 degrees Celsius, in the shade. Because of the heat, I didn't want to keep stopping so often, so I decided to keep riding. I noticed on the map that Liechtenstein was close and appeared to offer excellent looking roads at mountain sides. For Liechtenstein! I went up one such pass and it just continued to get better with each twist and turn. Better views, better turns and equally it wasn't that busy. I soon found out why. It was a dead end. Only served to access the ski resort at the top of the mountain. Now not wanting to return to Switzerland and with Liechtenstein offer Liechtenstein's offering not tempting me to stay, I dove towards East Austria, again paying attention to the wiggliest little lines on Google Maps to maximise fun. So, just had a little stop and a beer in this place. Looks pretty good, eh? So, currently trying to figure out where I'm going to sleep. Uh, I've got no idea. I uh, haven't planned anything, just learnt how to say sleep in a hammock in German, which is um, Schlaf in der Hangemata. Uh, and yeah, there isn't really anywhere to string a hammock because all of the trees are on massive fucking slopes. So I don't really know what I'm going to do. I think the sun goes down in about oh, an hour and a half-ish. So it's 25 past 6 at the minute. Local time. Um, yeah, not bad to stop to have a little beer and a bite to eat though, is it? Could have been a lot worse. Over and out. I continued to plod up and down mountainous routes and wasn't really paying attention to time. It had gotten reasonably late in the day and I hadn't yet found a camp spot. There was only about an hour left before sunset and all around me were paddocks and what few trees there were were on such steep hillsides that setting up a hammock would be nigh on impossible, let alone comfortable. So. After saying I wasn't sure where I was going to sleep tonight, um, yeah, I kept going down this road and it looked worse and worse and worse. Went up a few forest tracks, couldn't really find anything, then just kept riding. Had awkward conversations with a couple of Austrians trying to find out uh, if there was a campsite or somewhere to Schleffer der Um sleep in a hammock. And they all said no, kind of. One guy pointed me in the direction of where to go and I found this place. It's not the campsite that he was on about, but um, there was a little tunnel and there was a road going off down the side of it, a little gravel track that had a barrier across it. So I had a little walk down, couldn't really see anything, but I thought at least there's somewhere to sleep down there on the floor or something. Found this little patch of trees, but look at what this Brucey bone has brought us as well. Have a little look at this. And Let's go up. Look at that. And local time is about uh, 5 to 8. So sun has officially gone down, sunset at quarter to. I googled it. Um, yeah. So this is where we're staying. So camp is now set. We're all set up. Well, I say all set up. Important bit's done. Gonna move the bike over in a minute, might put the tarp up. See whether it's gonna rain now or not. Um, yeah, nearly 12 hours since I started on the road. Started at uh, 
20 past 8, just gone 20 past 8 this morning, and it's now 5 past 8 in Austria. Done three countries, Switzerland, um, Liechtenstein, and Austria. Going to head back into Germany tomorrow, start making my way home. Um, but, yeah, what an awesome day. Good morning. So, it's now Tuesday morning. It's about, uh, let's just check the time, I think it's about quarter to eight, something like that. Uh, so had a, oh you won't check the time, uh, had a relatively early early morning, early start, checked the map and thought, you know what, I've got time so I'm just going to chill out, make sure I have a coffee, you know, just pack away slowly, just get myself ready and then get on the road, don't have to have a, an early day, because I've, I've got loads of time. And then I thought, you know what, so I've, I've bought milk, I've bought coffee, uh, and then go to get my milk and see all these brown bits in it, and I'm like, what on earth are all those brown bits? And then I lift up the lid... plain to see something's been eating or been eating the lid and then got in at the milk um, it's all rough around the edges and if you see here on the bike I don't know if you can see that all the shavings so some little cheeky critter has had a load of milk in the middle of the night at some point so I don't trust the milk anymore because I don't know how long it's been open or anything like that or what's been in there so black coffee it is wicked Having just experienced the best wild camping experience of the trip thus far, and certainly one of the highlights ever, I chose to head once more back into Germany. This time though I was taking my time as I still had five and a bit days left of travel time and just simply meandered through different parts of Germany, seeing Lake Constance from the opposite side for example, and just generally taking more time to stop, admire the views and the places I was in popping into museums and showrooms alike along the way. So, I've been riding from Austria today. Uh, nothing really that exciting. Um, bit of a shame really that I left Austria. I kind of wish I was back there because the roads were a lot better, a lot better views and that kind of thing. But I'm back in Germany now, just sort of northeast of Constance, which means that you get a little view like this. to find any uh, Gasthof for a beer, but I'm sure I'll find one over and out. I ended up stopping in a guest house and meeting some fellow bikers who gave me some tips of where to ride, but also gave me the news that bad weather was coming in. Hangovers and bad weather don't mix well. So I gradually started to head roughly towards Offenburg. The bad weather had begun to clear and whilst it stopped raining it was still cold and a bit miserable, as was I. While well, looking for a camping spot on the Thursday night, heading up the hills behind houses searching desperately for a place to set up for the night, I thought I heard the engine revs rise, but I didn't move any faster. I battled with myself internally for a while, whether I'd imagined it, whether I was chewing into a noise that had always been there, or whether I actually had clutch slip. Soon, it became clear it was clutch slip, and I hastily made bed was found with plans to find a motorcycle garage in the morning. Well, hello from a sort of sunny Offenburg, this beautiful, wonderful industrial estate. And why you may ask, am I an industrial estate not wearing bike clothes? Well, so the CG clutch started slipping yesterday, and then it got worse and worse and worse. Um, 
So I've managed to go to a Honda dealer who are going to supply the parts for a nice and cheap, uh, nearly 180 euros. So I haven't got a lot of money left. I've got something like 57 euros. So Offenburg is probably, I think, something like seven, 800 kilometers from Calais, which is going to be fun. Um, the parts don't arrive till 9 a.m. tomorrow, which is Saturday. And the Euro Tunnel is booked for two o'clock on Sunday. And I have to fit the parts. Uh, the mechanics aren't in on a Saturday and they won't come in. They're not going to do it. So yeah, 9 a.m. the parts arrive. Apparently it's really bad, but I don't think they've been in there. Uh, apparently all the friction material has gone off the plates. So yeah, going to be interesting. I'm going to be hammocking just down the road from the place. Uh, there's a little forest, so yeah, that's at least going to save me some money. I'm not going to be paying for a hotel. Some of the hotels around here are like 80, 90 quid a night uh, without breakfast. So yeah, we're going to see how we go. I didn't get much footage during this time, as most of my time was spent in a Honda garage, getting thoroughly taken advantage of, which still annoys me to this day, and using their electricity to charge my phone and wait for the parts to arrive on the Saturday morning. So the bike is fixed, she's back together. Right. Just packing up now, getting ready to go. Uh, this is the little workshop I've been hanging out in, just at the back of the, the building. And uh, yeah, bike seems to work okay. Uh, it's about half 11, nearly quarter to 12. Um, and I've got 630 kilometers to do till Calais which I have to be there at one o'clock tomorrow. Fitting the parts were a doddle, and then I was making a beeline for Calais with just one minor detour en route to Rem or Reims. I'd always heard about the place, and with being such an avid petrol head, I couldn't come so close and not visit it, could I? Long day on the bike so far, but we have made it to somewhere iconic. Look at that. Good old Reams. They've been here before, but it's pretty, isn't it? It's nice. Quite cool. After more minor clutch slip issues and it dawning on me that it only needed adjusting, not a full clutch kit that I'd just purchased, I once more made way for Calais. Again, the remainder of the trip from Dover to Somerset, I didn't record much as the ride was about four or five hours continuously through some of the heaviest rain I've ever experienced. And my want to get home far outweighed my want to set up my equipment and film. In hindsight though, I wish it had been the other way around. Now, as I sit here talking to you, I can safely say this was my favorite trip I've ever undertaken. It had highs, it had lows, it had new experiences, but above all, it showed me how easy it can be to experience real adventure. Since this trip, the small yet mighty CG has been to Scotland twice with me to experience the North Coast 500, which is beautiful. It's been to Cornwall, Devon, Shropshire, dismantled into the back of cars and been used, albeit not quite as much as I'd like. Reliving the footage though of making this video has lit the fire in me again for another trip. But who knows where next? Perhaps Ireland? Maybe a bit further afield, somewhere in the Scandinavian area? We'll see. All I know is that if you want to experience adventure, I implore you, please, go out there, go for it. Life is for living, regardless of what you ride or where you ride it, but these experiences are here for the taking, so grab it with both hands. Thanks for watching, ride safe.